Hey guys, what's up? It's Kenny, your favorite history buff, and today we're going to talk about one of the most infamous figures in Chinese history, the eunuch Zhang Ai from the Northern Wei Dynasty. Now, Zhang Ai was no ordinary eunuch. He was so powerful that he killed not one, but multiple emperors, and some people even consider him to be the most powerful eunuch in Chinese history. So, whether you love him or hate him, there's no denying that Zhang Ai was a fascinating character, and in this video, we're going to dive deep into his story, explore his rise to power, and examine his ultimate downfall. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the juicy details of one of the most powerful eunuchs in Chinese history. Before I talk about Zhang Ai, let me tell you more about eunuchs in ancient China. In ancient China, eunuchs, also known as Taijin, were servants who were specifically employed to serve the emperor and his family. The use of eunuchs dates back to the Western Zhou dynasty, where they were referred to as palace attendants. At that time, eunuchs were merely low-ranking servants who were responsible for menial tasks like cleaning and running errands. However, as the power of the imperial court grew, so did the number of eunuchs. During the Warring States period and the Qin dynasty, the use of eunuchs increased significantly, and they began to hold more significant positions in the imperial court. Eunuchs like Mai Hang and Zhu Go even rose to positions of great power and influence. During the Han Dynasty, all servants who attended the emperor were collectively known as eunuchs. However, not all early eunuchs were necessarily castrated, and it wasn't until the Eastern Han Dynasty that only castrated men were allowed to serve as eunuchs. During this time, it was mandated that all eunuchs must be castrated, and large-scale eunuch rule emerged for the first time in history. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, eunuchs gained even more power and influence, and some even even held positions of great authority. However, this led to infighting and conflict between eunuchs and other officials, and by the end of the dynasty, eunuchs were involved in a power struggle with the imperial family, leading to what is known as the First Eunuch Era. In Chinese history, there was a crazy eunuch who killed two emperors and a crown prince within one year, and was later even granted the title of king. This eunuch was named Zhang Ai and served in the court of Northern Wei. He was the first eunuch in Chinese history to be granted the title of king. Let me tell you more about Zhang Ai. Once upon a time in ancient China, there was a crazy eunuch named Zhang Ai. He was known for his brutal nature and his ability to scheme and plot. Zhang Ai's origins are unclear, but it's believed that he was castrated and then entered the palace as a low-ranking eunuch. Despite his humble beginnings, Zhang Ai quickly climbed the ranks thanks to his intelligence and cunning. He caught the eye of the Emperor Tai Wu of Northern Wei who was impressed by his quick thinking and attention to detail. Zhang Ai's rise to power continued until he became the chief eunuch, a position of great influence and authority. However, Zhang Ai's thirst for power and control knew no bounds. He began to meddle in politics, misusing his authority to serve his own interests. He formed his own clique and worked tirelessly to undermine the government and seize power. Zhang Ai's first victim was the crown prince, told Ba Huang. The prince was a righteous man who opposed Zhang Ai's scheming and plotting. Fearing that the prince would one day seek revenge, Zhang Ai decided to take matters into his own hands and plotted to have him killed. Zhang Ai's plan was simple. He whispered lies and false accusations about the prince to the emperor Tai Wu, and the emperor believed him. Many other associates of crown prince were dragged into the incident and executed. And so it was that the innocent and virtuous crown prince grew ill in anxiety and died in 451, all because of Zhang Ai's evil machinations. The emperor Tai Wu was heartbroken after the death of his beloved loved son, the crown prince. He began to realize that he had misunderstood his son and treated him unfairly. Meanwhile, Zhang Ai, the eunuch who had orchestrated the murder of the crown prince, became increasingly paranoid that his crimes would be exposed. He feared that the Emperor Tai Wu would eventually discover the truth and seek revenge. In a desperate attempt to cover his tracks, Zhang Ai decided to assassinate the Emperor Tai Wu. He succeeded in killing the emperor and covering up the true cause of his death. With the emperor dead, Zhang Ai then plotted to put the prince who was close to him on the throne, the prince of Nanan, told Bai Yu. However, told Bai Yu was not the most qualified candidate for the throne, and Zhang Ai knew that he needed to eliminate any potential rivals. Zhang Ai set his sights on the most likely successor, the prince of Dongping, told Bai Han. 
He used every dirty trick in the book to get rid of Tolba Han and succeeded in getting Tolba Yu crowned as the new emperor. Tolba Yu was nothing more than a puppet emperor, and Zhang Ai pulled all the strings behind the scenes. He was appointed to multiple important positions and even given the title of king. However, Tolba Yu eventually began to suspect that something was amiss. He tried to weaken Zhang Ai's power, but was unsuccessful. Zhang Ai responded by having Tolba Yu killed proving that he was still in control. But Zhang Ai's luck would soon run out. After Told Ba Yu's death, officials rallied around Told Ba Jun, the 13-year-old son of the late crown prince, and crowned him as the new emperor. Told Ba Jun wasted no time in arresting Zhang Ai and his followers and executing them along with their families, putting an end to Zhang Ai's reign of terror. The history of eunuchs in China lasted for thousand years. In ancient China, eunuchs were a product of the development of royal power. They were a group of people who were closest to the ruling power, and their status was usually very low. However, they were also the group that had the most intimate contact with the rulers. Throughout the long history of ancient dynasties, there were many individual eunuchs who had high power and influence. Some even had the ability to change the course of the dynasty and manipulate the succession of the imperial throne. The role and status of eunuchs varied in different historical periods. The relationship between monarchs and eunuchs was mutually reinforcing, and no one could do without the other. This situation existed in every dynasty. As the monarchy became increasingly centralized, the monarchs used the upper echelons of eunuchs to monitor and control court officials, while eunuchs used the monarch's selfishness to seize power and plot against others, gradually evolving into a situation where eunuchs were essentially in power. The cases of the rise of the power of eunuchs in the Han, Tang, and Ming dynasties have always been a hot topic in Chinese history. The phenomenon of eunuch power and influence was present in all three dynasties, but there were significant differences. Essentially, the rise of eunuch power was due to their ability to share or monopolize imperial power for various reasons. Since the Eastern Han Dynasty, the harm caused by eunuchs became increasingly evident as the ancient Chinese society evolved. During the Ming Dynasty, the rulers were eager to strengthen centralized power, and the influence of eunuchs in the later period of the Ming Dynasty also increased. This was closely related to the gradual dependence of the Ming Dynasty on eunuchs. The basic role of eunuchs in ancient dynasties remained the same, to serve the ruling class around the emperor. Eunuchs were a tool that the royal power had to use when it reached a certain stage of development, and their power and status could not be achieved through the imperial examination system or local political achievements. They relied entirely on the trust and authorization of the emperor. This special nature of eunuch power reflects the fact that eunuchs must rely on royal power to exist. The saying accompany the emperor like accompanying a tiger reflects the high degree of danger associated with this profession, but at the same time, it is easier to gain the trust and authorization of the royal power. It is interesting to note that despite the immense power that eunuchs wielded during the Han and Ming dynasties, they never went so far as to kill an emperor. However, in the late Tang dynasty, there were several instances of emperors being killed by eunuchs, and eunuchs were able to force emperors to abdicate or interfere with the succession of the throne. Now, I am going to compare the cases of Zhang Ai and the Tang eunuchs assassinating emperors. During the Tang dynasty, many eunuchs were appointed as military supervisors and gradually gained control over the military. After the An Lok Shan Rebellion, the Tang dynasty suffered a significant decline. The Jin Yuan Rebellion in 783 led to Emperor Da Zhang of Tang's extreme distrust of military officials. He not only placed the royal guard entirely in the hands of eunuchs but also elevated them to the highest status and made them the closest royal guard to the emperor. This move effectively placed his life and dignity in the hands of the eunuchs, and it was the fundamental reason why eunuchs in the Tang dynasty dared to assassinate emperors. In contrast, the case of Zhang Ai was different. He took advantage of his close relationship with the emperor and the emperor's trust in him to assassinate the emperor twice. He succeeded because of his meticulous planning, taking advantage of the weak defenses around the emperor to carry out the killings. It is worth noting that Zhang Ai did not control the royal guard like the Tang eunuchs, and he was eventually caught and executed by the royal guard. It is evident that after Zhang Ai, no eunuch in the Northern Wai Dynasty was as powerful as he was, and there were no other instances of eunuchs killing emperors. This shows that Zhang Ai was just an individual example of eunuch power and influence and was not like the Tang eunuchs who controlled the royal guard 
and manipulated the emperor because of the system. So, that's it for our deep dive into the infamous eunuch Zhang Ai. Now, the question is, do you agree that he was the most powerful eunuch in Chinese history? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in more videos about the special privileges and powers eunuchs had in Chinese history, just hit that subscribe button and like this video to let me know that you want more. Your support and encouragement are what keep me going and motivated to create more content for you. Also, if you have any suggestions or topics you'd like me to cover in my future videos, don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know. I'm always open to feedback and love hearing from my viewers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.